Welcome to the Meant to Be Outdoors podcast, where our goal is to connect listeners to the great outdoors with hosts Brian Hoffmeyer and Ben Brandell. I'm host Ben Brandell, owner of Meant to Be Outdoors, instructor of outdoor skills, and passionate about personal growth. I'm host Brian Hoffmeyer, wildlife biologist and avid outdoorsman. Welcome back to the Meant to Be Outdoors podcast. I'm your host, Brian, with my co-host, Ben Brandell. It is time for another Myth Monday episode, and today we are going to be talking about whether or not black bears have been relocated to Missouri. So this one is kind of really for our Missouri folk, but I think a lot of people who listen, even if you are not here locally, you will find this interesting um, as far as the conservation versus preservation topic. Um, And just really, if you enjoy wildlife and the outdoors, you're going to enjoy this episode. And for our Missouri folks, most of you are probably going to be surprised by what you learn. I know I was surprised. Um, I learned even more than I thought I knew in our research for this episode. But before we get started, it's time to give thanks. I'm thankful for living here in the Ozarks. Uh, Growing up here in the Ozarks, you kind of get jaded to what you have around you. When I studied um, recreation in college, most of my buddies after graduation left, went to other states because Colorado is cool. You know, uh, the Grand Canyon is cool. All these places are cool to go see and be a part of. But something about the Ozarks is just has always kept me here. I just love it, and I'm so thankful to be a part of it. From from our streams to our caves to our forests, are just it's awesome. It is a beautiful part of God's creation, and and to be able to be born and and raised here and live here most of our lives is is definitely a blessing. I agree with that. What I am especially thankful for today is healing. The last several weeks, um, actually about two weeks, and we've been through it with my family, from my kids to my wife to myself, uh, multiple different types of sicknesses from from pink eye to the flu to maybe RSV, things we don't even know. Um, Thankfully, this is the first day in, in 15 days that we are all back out into the world today and feeling better. Um, and I just want to point out why I'm so thankful for that. You know, we we pray for healing. Um, even people that aren't Christians, when we need healing, we turn and we pray and we say, well, let's give, let's give uh, good vibes and ask for healing because we all want it, we all need it. However, a lot of the time we expect for uh, or want, I shouldn't say we expect, but we want a snap of the fingers for things just to go away and get better. But the reality is that's not how healing works. I do believe that God can heal that way, but it is rare and it doesn't always happen. It's not when he was walking this earth and you could just touch his cloak and be miraculously healed. It is still a miracle, but it happens in a much different way. But without God, the healer, I don't believe any healing would occur. So I'm thankful for healing. I'm thankful that my family is healed. I know there is a lot of people out there struggling with all kinds of sickness and disease and ailments right now, Um, but do know that healing is a possibility. Do what you need to do to take care of yourself um, and and pray. Pray for healing. Um, Ask, and once you ask, believe, and it shall happen. So with that being said, let's dive into talking about black bears. And the reason we really want to talk about this topic, in the last few years, Missouri has actually reintroduced bear hunting seasons. I shouldn't say reintroduced because we never really had them before, but we now have bear hunting seasons in Missouri. And I keep hearing things like, oh, what a cool, it's so cool that they've uh, relocated bears to Missouri and that the population's doing well. The state's done a great job with that. I've even heard comments of, I can't believe the state would go through all that work of bringing bears back to Missouri and then start a hunting season and start killing them. And I just kind of want to tell, bring uh, the truth to light of the story of what's really happening with our bear population, what the state is really doing, and what the truth is about our hunting season. And to kind of tell that story, I think we should start from the beginning. And some of the earliest records of bears in Missouri uh, actually go back to journals from from travelers uh, in the early 1800s. So there's a man named Henry Schoolcraft. And we have his journals from when he traveled through the Ozarks in 1818. And he actually met a couple of hunters during that time. One of them was named John Shaw. And in 1811, John Shaw actually claimed to have harvested 300 bears out of southwest Missouri. And so Henry Schoolcraft, you know, kind of bucked him on that. In his journal, he kind of was like, well, what's your proof for that? And he showed him all the hides. He had over 300 black bear hides, and 800 gallons of bear oil. Bear oil. Bears are oily and they have fat, and the bear oil for people of that time 
was really important. So mm-hmm. they, they could take the fat, cook it, render it down. Barrel oil was now preserved. Um, fat was a limiting resource uh, in people's diets. They needed fat. Just like if you watch the show alone, they're trying to get fat. Not in our diets today, we have a lot of it. But they could also burn it. They could do treat skin with it, treat wounds with it. This this bear oil or fat, rendered fat, was a really important thing for these people, and he had 800 gallons of it. So he was harvesting a lot of bears. There was another man that was said to have 1,100 gallons of it that was a neighbor as well. So between the two of them, you know, almost 2,000 gallons of, of bear oil. So mm-hmm. think about how many bears they were harvesting. There had to be a lot of bears, but then that leads to late 1800s, 1890s, around 1900s, in the Ozarks, bears were thought to be extinct, not even 100 years later. And why do you think that is? No regulation. So people, it is sometimes hard to understand a wildlife agencies' regulations because there is so much research and I'll say sometimes politics that goes into those regulations. It's hard to understand them, but most of the time it is science and research-based and there is a reason for them all. However, when there is a lack of them, we can see that humans are going to abuse those resources. We aren't going to care from them. So because of overhunting, now we have no bears in the state. And that's late 1800s, early 1900s. And so for many, many years, that's the way it was. But in 1958, Arkansas, I want everybody to hear that, Arkansas, not Missouri, started relocating bears. And that is kind of where um, the restoration of Missouri bears takes place and it, so, it so arkansas is located south of missouri correctly directly it, to our south directly to our south it's definitely they have got some warmer climate they definitely have different animal species than we do right. especially on the southern side of when it, where arkansas and texas come together so yeah, as we're recording we're like i don't know 27 miles from arkansas or something like that where right we're at. so you know we're close but when you're talking about arkansas and missouri in relation to where it's at their temperatures are even a little bit warmer than ours mm-hmm. um so but what about forests? Do we have about the same, or are they a little bit different than us? Well, I don't know as far as acreage, but I do know that M- Missouri has a Missouri has done a really great job between what the federal government does and Missouri as a state. We actually have a lot of land preserved, and our right. citizens should be proud of that because of the way that we voted and, and the taxes that we've allowed to be levied to preserve all this land, and it's great. So we actually do have a lot of good quality bear habitat in the state of Missouri. So I think now's a really good time to kind of bring some of that up. You you just use one of the words in, in regards to definition. Um, you know, you talked about evidence based research of of here's the proof right. of, of what's happening and and what I think listeners really need to know because it, it opened my eyes when I understand what the definitions are is is what is preservation, what is conservation because you are going to be using those quite a bit throughout this talk. Right. So can you can you kind of clarify and, and explain what those words are? Right. Um, well. I'll, I'll, I'll keep it in the terms of, of regulations of our resources. So in the, er, in, the, in the 1800s, there were no regulations for hunting. You could do whatever you wanted. It was shoot to survive. Every man for themselves. Every man for themselves. Food, every animal food for, for family. themselves. Yeah. Food for your family to survive. So no, re, no regulations. So there's no preservation occurring. There's no conservation occurring at that time at all. None. Then you move into what I call preservation. And the definition of preservation is basically no use of a natural resource. So say a population, which is what truly happens here, we're going to kind of paint that picture, a population gets down to negligible. Some people are going to call it extinct. Extirpated means geographically extinct from an area. So extirpated species, um, that you're going to have to move into preservation because if you harvest or kill what's left, now you have nothing. And once you have nothing, you have nothing. You can't just go get it again, right? Nothing can come from nothing. And then once you start to reestablish a population, you can move into where we are at now and having these small hunting seasons and harvesting some of these animals. And that is conservation. And the simplest definition of conservation is a wise use of a resource. So you're using it, not abusing it. Preservation is that complete protection of. Conservation is you're going to use it, but you need to use it while wisely with a uh, a focus of stewardship so in the 1800s there wasn't even conservation because they were using it but not wisely yeah abusing it they were abusing it yeah, so abusing it. the population um that so the number of bears were declining or or drastically fell and so you're saying that arkansas started to 
right bring more in so during that time in the 1800s when all that hunting was going on you're you're talking about 50,000 bears in Missouri and another 50,000 in Arkansas so tens of thousands of bears all over which also at that time wasn't a huge issue because you didn't have all these these urban areas and metropolises like we do now. So there was even more habitat. The state could sustain that. There was a higher carrying capacity for the black bear species. But now we could never sustain that bear population because we, while we do have a lot of good habitat, we don't have enough for, for 50,000 bears. And so in 1958, the state of Arkansas, not Missouri, I want to be very clear on that, the state of Arkansas started a bear, uh, we'll call it a bolstering, they want to what they wanted to bolster or build up and support their native population of bears. Um, I don't think we've said it yet. The black bear, Ernest Americanus, is native to Missouri and native to to Arkansas. <laughs> so they went to Minnesota and they went to Canada and they trapped 200 black bears and they brought them back to bolster their population in Arkansas. They still had a native population, but it was small. It was struggling. They knew they needed to do something so that they didn't end up like Missouri or some of the other surrounding states. So they bolstered that population and it was a huge, huge success. They worked on that into the 60s. And what you have now, you know, 50, 60, 70 years later is that that population in Arkansas has grown so much. They have over 6,000 bears is their estimate in Arkansas. Bears are territorial. The males, they're going to go out and they're going to find their own territory. And as they do and they establish territories, breeding females are going to follow them and and inhabit that area as well. So because the Missouri Ozarks and the Arkansas Ozarks are so similar in topography and habitat for these bears, they don't know state lines. They obviously, as their populations have grown, have started to disperse, much like the the nine-banded armadillo that we have now, as the populations have grown all the way from Texas, has dispersed north. We have them all the way up into northern Missouri now. So Missouri has never relocated or brought in bears. We've never went and trapped and brought bears into Missouri. I want to be very clear on that because there is a misconception of why would you go through all the work and taxpayer dollars of trapping and relocating bears to Missouri just to have a hunting season? Well, they didn't. That is not truth. That is a Mm -hmm. myth. We have bears in Missouri now, largely in part because of Arkansas's work that they did. And then the work now, once Missouri started seeing all these bears in 2010, Missouri Department of Conservation really started this this bear research project where they were they were doing hair traps and and collecting hair so they could uniquely identify through DNA testing these species or uh, each individual bear and learn about them during the winter when they go into their dens they're going in and they're they're studying these dens and studying these females and how many cubs they're having getting an idea of habitat and where they are uh, they're trapping them putting radio collars on them so they can track their movement. They're really getting a really good picture of the habitat that they use and how many that we have. And then what is that estimate now of of how many bears we have in Missouri? You know, the populations here in Missouri, Brian, range from about 800 to 1,000. And honestly, they're they're really saying that most of that population is located south of I-44. So I-44 is an interstate that kind of separates it, kind of halves Missouri, kind of halves Missouri, if I can say it that way. Yeah, it kind of runs on a... Diag- so east to west joplin down here kind of southwest missouri on the oklahoma border all the way up up to st louis uh, but i think that has to do if you just look at the habitat of missouri and and the habitat that bears like most of that habitat's going to be south of that corridor so right. there are going to be some more north but as you get more into northern missouri you really get into a lot uh, a lot more open and farmland and there will be a few bears that disperse into that especially as these populations grow in the south um, but yeah 800 to a thousand right now you know, they've really, through research, um, scientists uh, across our country have really been able to, to hone in on the recruitment rate or, or how fast bear populations grow. And they're going to say that's at about 9%. So ab- about 9% per year bear populations are going to grow, which means in 10 years you're going to about double your population. Um, so that's a really good number. Those are really good numbers for these wildlife agencies to keep in mind because Every state um, has a carrying capacity. They have the amount of habitat and the amount of urban areas that they have to balance. Um, We cannot ignore the fact that we have more people now than we used to. Mm -hmm. And so we live here and we want the bears to live here. There has to be that balance. You know, 
it wasn't uncommon when there were 50,000 bears in Arkansas and Missouri to, to have bear attacks. But in the last, I don't even know how many decades, there, that, that doesn't happen anymore because we don't have that many bears and they don't need to go where people are. They're only going to do that when they need to. Bears are actually very, very choosy about their habitat. They're very choosy where they live. And right now with 800 bears in Missouri, we have plenty enough habitat for them to choose these dense woodland areas to go live. Now, am I going to say that people aren't going to see bears? Well, well, no, that'd be ridiculous because some of the best, you mentioned evidence-based science and evidence-based research, some of the best evidence-based science there is is, is physical sightings. People mm-hmm. seeing bears. Mm-hmm. Um, and you and I have both seen bears in the wild in Missouri. We actually got to see one this year when we went and floated the 11 point. Uh, there was one right there, but we were in a very, it was actually National Forest. That bear was where it was supposed to be. Correct. Um, we were going down the river and it was on the bank of the river in a very dense wooded area. So I mean, we it, were in its home. We were in its home. It yes. chose great habitat. We were just checking its habitat out. Right. Yeah, but it was cool. It was cool to see and, and, and hear its noise and, and see how it reacted to us. Uh, we weren't very close to it. We were actually on the opposite side of the river, and it was not very happy that we were there. No, it made it made very clear that uh, it wasn't excited to see us. Yeah. You said, oh, bear, and I look up, and I had heard the sound, and I just see trees shaking because this thing had, had took off. And, I mean, it was rambling away from us as fast as it could, could get away from us. But it was cool to know it was there. However... It would have been a little bit cooler had it happened after we slept the night there. Because <laughs> right. that night when we set up camp, you know, and the whole back of your mind was like, oh, bears. So we did ha- hang our bear bag and, and, and make sure all our food was put away the best as possible. Because definitely at the back of my mind, I was thinking, bear, you slept on the ground that night. And I was like, you know what? I, I th- I'm going to hang up in this tree a little bit higher just so a bear, if he does come in camp, he's going to mess with Ben before he messes with me. That's the thing, though, that That's uh, a true friend. it does go back to perspective because it doesn't matter if you're in a hammock, if you're laying on the ground, if a bear wants to touch you, mess you, with you, he's gonna. You wanted a bear kiss. <laughs> I would love one, yes, but, <laughs> you know, and, and not to get too in detail on, on bear care, but don't feed bears. Yeah, the moment you, The moment you feed them, they come back, and, and Brian was talking about the, these reports about evidence-based, you know, research. When you you can actually get onto Missouri Department of Conservation's website and they've got maps of people reporting sightings, you know, mm-hmm. whether it be pictures of tracks or actually seeing them eat out of their bird feeders. Yeah. And so they have all this tracked and they and they've got all this data and that's where you can really see from all the data and all the marks of all these sightings they have from Joplin all the way to St. Louis and then on the southern side of that, which that follows I forty four. There are so many more sightings. But there are sightings north of I-44 all the way up to the northern part of Missouri where, yeah. where it wants to touch There's even out. been some ur- urban sightings, uh, bears walking in the, the streets in, in Baldwin, which is around St. Louis, and, mm-hmm. and just walking through neighborhoods. So that's way up the, the most northern part of I-44, as north as it goes there here in our state. So, so talking about conservation, mm-hmm. you know, humans don't want bears in the cities. Right. They don't. They don't want them interacting in our homes, in our schools, in our hospitals, churches, libraries. They they would be fearful. Right. So we want to keep those populations controlled and we do that through through hunting. Through hunting. Right. So that's kind of where we're at now and that's that's really what sparked uh the idea for this podcast is hearing some people's comments, seeing some comments online of uh, well, why are we having a hunting season? You know, we only have 800. We've worked so hard to get back to this. But we can't work towards the populations that we used to have because we don't have the habitat for that because we have so many people and, and so much development now. So there is going to have to be that balance. Arkansas is actually a really great uh, model for us, for Missouri. So we can look at what Arkansas is doing. Arkansas has about six, they estimate their population at 6,000. And they have a much larger harvest. They've had hunting season a lot longer than us now. They have a much larger harvest. This year they harvested uh, 437 black bears. Mm -hmm. And in Missouri, we only harvested eight. So you can see the huge difference. You can see the contrast there. Uh, The the areas they can hunt are much larger in Arkansas. There's uh, several other zones. Uh, The ways you can hunt in Arkansas are much larger. They have youth seasons and rifle seasons and muzzleloader seasons and archery seasons, but they all are based off quotas. You can't just go out and kill whatever you want. You have to 
stay within these these quotas and you have to get your tags and follow all the regulations so it, it is very very regulated and very very managed with good reason however if you look into what arkansas is doing with their black bear populations they've done a great job of getting it to that 6,000 with this bolstering project that they started in the 1950s but they want to keep it there they understand we have this much habitat we have this many people we want black bears we want to be responsible of this resource that God has entrusted us with because of our dominion, but we can't, we have to keep it in balance. And that's what conservation is. So they allow for 400 to 500 bears to be killed because they understand that of their 6,000, that's about their recruitment rate. That's about mm. that 9%, I think what 500 and be between what it was like 540 or something would be 9% of 6,000. So that would be the recruitment rate. So if they can harvest around 9% of their population each year, they know that's going to stay their population. They're not growing their bear population. And Missouri is kind of modeling that. The worst, Missouri is actually growing pretty rapidly right now. And we're going to grow to a certain point. They haven't said it's going to be 5,000, 4,000. They haven't put that point out there. But Missouri is going to do the same thing. And they're going to increase their hunting seasons. They're going to increase the amount of bears that can be taken. And they're going to find that healthy balance between bear and people. Are there going to be exceptions? Are there going to be instances when we have to handle, we have to step in and say, oh, this bear's jumping in the school dumpster. We have to... Uh, uh, euthanize it yeah that's going to happen and, and that's kind of what i want to add in too there's there are different report types and, and this is interesting to me because you got to think about it there's observation there's interaction and there's mortality so you as we have numbers increasing we're going to have observation we're going to find more fur we're going to find tracks you're going to find like where people are like why is my trash can been annihilated out here in my yard you're going to have these right. observations of a bear then you kind of get into the next phase, which is interaction, what you're talking about. Now there, we see the black bear up in the tree. You know, uh, it, it got scared and it ran up in the tree in the schoolyard. Mm -hmm. um, it's in the school. It's in the car. Um, we're having these interactions. And then you have the third part, which is mortality. Now we're seeing them dead on the side of the road. They're, they yeah. are being hunted and harvested. And we're having pictures. We're having um, th this different side of, of yeah, that. They, what they, The research in Missouri has found that uh, of male cubs that are born – the mortality rate's about 30%. So about seven out of 10 are, are going to survive uh, to be a year old. And then it's higher for females. And uh, actually, mortality rate's only 10% for them. So about nine out of 10 females are going to make it to be to be a year old, which, which is really cool because if you look at other um, non-predator species like deer or things like that, they're, you could almost flip those mortality rates. So they are growing. They're, the populations are growing. They 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 survive well. We have a lot of habitat, um, but as long as we keep that balance, we're going to be okay. But I want people to understand this is much more of a, a case of reoccupying a native territory rather than it is relocating. We didn't bring these bears in. A, a really cool thing that I found was they're doing DNA testing on the bears that we have in Missouri now, and they are largely finding that most of them are from that that Minnesota. Canada, Arkansas line that they brought in in the DNA. 50s. DNA. They're analyzing this DNA so they can go down to exact the exact population they came from. But what is really cool is they have found, they didn't know this, they, they believe bears were completely gone from Missouri. We've always had a few bears that survived. Our original population was never fully extinct. They are finding DNA from that original population from the 17 and 1800s. And that's really cool for me because somewhere in rural Missouri in, in a cave in the dense woodland, these there was always a few bears that were able to procreate and survive. That's actually something I want to add to this that I've learned through our research um, for this podcast is that bear have many different dens. Right. Because I've always been growing up here in the Ozarks, I'm like, okay, if there's a cave, then there's a bear. <laughs> you know what I mean? Like that was always this. Yeah. And that's something that I learned that was a, that really kind of debunking the myth for me is is that bears don't have to have caves. You know, right. here in the Missouri, since we're, we're breaking down Missouri, we are a karst topography. So we do have a lot of caves. We have a lot of nooks and crannies and little holes, and a, and a cave doesn't necessarily have to have water running through it, you know. But I'm also learning that bears will use brush piles. Let's say a huge, massive oak fell over, mm -hmm. and it's still got a bunch of leaves on it, and they haven't all They will... They'll get in there. Yeah. They'll they'll a dozer deck where somebody's dozed a bunch of trees. Yeah, yeah, matter of fact, I've even found that the bear will dig. So if if a base of a tree is dead, 
and it's already kind of got hollowed out, they will dig, 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 and they'll actually make a hole right there. They'll, they'll use dead trees. If, if a huge tree is hollow, they will climb up and get in it. So why this is helping me is that, yeah, it bears don't have to have some huge cave to live in. So those populations that you're talking about here in the Ozarks, it could have just been on a hillside that no one ever saw with a, a tree that's fallen right. down. You know, that's just so cool that, that they are that adaptive that um, this is where they live. This is home. Right. Yeah. And, and, and back to the relationship between bears and people, we, we are going to have to have hunting, um, whether you're a hunter or not. And you want there's people that absolutely want to get in on the hunting, but we are going to have to have it. Otherwise, these populations are, are going to to increase. And if we have no hunting, then we're going to have too many bears and we're going to have too many human encounters. We're going to start to have bad things and, and people are going to be screaming for that. Why didn't anybody do anything? So there is a balance between harvesting some of these animals and doing the research to make sure we're providing the things for them to have healthy populations. But we didn't bring these bears in. We did not bring these bears in. And I think that is actually really a, um, I think it's just a testament to to creation's resilience is uh, humans didn't have to step in and, and say, hey, bears, come to Missouri. They're, they're going out and doing and finding what they need, and Missouri just happens to be that spot. So, Ben, talk about a little of the, the hunting uh, in Missouri, the regulations, how many people can get tags, what do you have to do to get one? I've already mentioned that this year we harvested eight bears in Missouri. This was our second consecutive year in a row, if I'm correct, of, of having a, a black bear hunting season. Uh, where can people hunt? How do you apply? Uh, give us some of those details. So season of Missouri is October 17th through the 26th. So kind of in contrast, we, we've been looking at the success of Arkansas and then trying to kind of model that at you know here in Missouri. So our season is not as long as Arkansas season, but it is long enough for us to harvest eight, right. just like you talked about. Which and is last year was 12. Correct, yes. So MDC's website states that more than 5,880 hunters applied for this hunting season. Yeah. That's that's a lot of people, which yeah. is cool. People excited about it. They really are. And that takes place in May. But 400 permits for the season are given for a maximum of 40 bears. Right. So only so 10% say, me, of right. the 10% of the people that get drawn are actually allowed to harvest a bear. So for 400 permits for the season with a maximum of 40 bear. And Brian already shared with you that we only harvested Eight. Yeah, and I think that is actually, um, I think that's a testament to, we have 800 to 1,000, but we still have so much habitat. We still have uh, room in our carrying capacity for more because if we can harvest up to 40 and we're only getting eight, it's hard to go find a bear right now. Right. Maybe we haven't hunted bear in Missouri for so long. We just don't have a lot of good bear hunters. <laughs> <laughs> Maybe not. Maybe we don't know to look in trees. Right. We're only looking in caves. Right. I don't know. I, I don't know, but we have that quota of 40 and we're only getting eight, you know, we've only had 20 in the last two years combined. So there is still a lot of room out there for bears to escape humans. Um, so mm -hmm. I think that's a testament of we, we have room for more bears. And I, I think that's a cool story because, uh, I like black bears and I don't want them in my stuff and around my home, but it is cool to see them in the wild and to know that they're, they're doing well and doing what they were designed to do. Right. And to clarify a little bit more, um, you know, it's a drawing. So, like I shared, 5,880 hunters put in for this draw, mm -hmm. but only 400 were selected you know, randomly. They're going to use the word randomly because yeah. they don't want the, the, the thought or idea that people are being picked yeah. or chosen. So it's a random draw. But MDC also shared that only 350 hunters actually purchased their permit. So there's 50 that they got drawn but did nothing with that. Interesting. So that's kind of an, another talk that would be fun to have of, why are you putting in for a draw if you're not going to hunt? Yeah, yeah, life gets in the way a lot life of times. Life maybe, right. Yeah. That's Sickness, 50 people, lost but, a job, who knows. But again, um, only eight were harvested. And we do have different zones. Um, the last kind of the part I want to talk about on the hunting side is is it is so important to know what zone you're hunting in because there are quotas. And so if you are a, uh, if you're wanting to go hunt for bear, you must check the night before you go hunting. So, Let's say that you want to go hunting tomorrow morning, and it was season. You would check in. You'd call the number. You can get online and look to see if the quota was was reached the night before, because it is your responsibility. If you go the next morning in that zone and the quota's already been hit, 
man, you can you can get a lot of trouble. So, all, yeah, uh, following sure. rules, That's following the regulations, it is so important because we can see back in the 1800s how devastating it can be when there is no rules, there are no regulations, and no one's following. Um, it's really important. Yeah, yeah, I think that we've covered most of it. I want to end with. Uh, the story of the first time I ever saw a black bear in person in Missouri. Yes. And believe it or not, you know, we think now about the, the success and the numbers growing. And I don't know what the numbers of bears in Missouri were at this time. But the, the first bear I ever saw in Missouri was 15 years ago. 15 years ago. Um, I was actually home from, from college for the summer. And I was waiting tables at, at a, a local restaurant. And... I actually was taking an an afternoon nap to go work the evening shift, and as I woke up, my folks came in, actually it was my mom, and she said, the neighbors just called and said, there is a bear in their backyard. And I was like, what? Right. Which, where where I grew up, it is a neighborhood, but everybody has to have a minimum of, of three acres. You have to have at least three acres. Uh, so there's just a little bit of, of land there, and it is densely wooded. In this particular part that we lived, the land all backs up to several thousand acres of state forest. Mm-hmm. So dense woodland, caves, streams, steep, perfect bear habitat. So I was stoked in my love for animals, I, but I, I was still like, this this can't be right. Or if it is right, by the time I get over there, it's going to be gone. And I mean, I threw some clothes on real quick. And I ran out the door and just kind of down to the to the end of the street there, I'm going to say a couple hundred yards. And as I got to their front door, I could see through their front door, through their the glass of their back of their house, and I could see this bear up in this tree right there in their backyard. And right. I was like, oh my gosh. And they're all standing at the glass looking at it. They opened the door. I walked right through that door, right through the back door, right out onto the deck because I was going to get as close to this bear as I could. And it was so cool because it was up in a tree. It was an elevated back deck, and I was able to walk right out onto this deck. And it looked like a young male black bear, and there was a, a, a bird feeder with black sunflower seed in it, and he was trying to get to this black sunflower seed. Um, but he was so focused on that that he wasn't really fearful of me. And at this time, we didn't have um, great cameras on our phones. <laughs> However, I did have a flip phone. It was the first cell phone I ever had with a camera on it. So I flipped this thing open. You're getting old. (laughs) If you ever experienced one of those cameras, they aren't great. Um, I do still have that picture, and we are going to share it on our social. So if you want to see it, look out on our social accounts. But 15 years ago was when I saw my first black bear in Missouri, and that was actually out of Busick State Park was where that bear probably was living and and came out of to get that bird seed. But I was able to walk right up to it uh, 10 feet or less and and see this bear. It was a really, really cool experience. Right. So that has been what you said 15 years ago. Yeah. And we know that the population has been slowly growing. 9% per year. Because there was no hunting season then, and there is a hunting season now. Right. And that's 15, from 15 years ago. Yeah, so at that time, preservation was the, the tool being used by the conservation department. And right. now they've had to move into the conservation tool of wisely using that resource. So the recap is preservation was no use. Conservation is wise use. Correct. We didn't bring any bears into the state. They've been slowly growing. The populations have been growing and so because of that we're able to now hunt them today that's correct i hope you've enjoyed all the information we've shared about black bears with you i hope you'll share this with your friends because this has been a really really fun one for us to to learn uh, all the details about what the state has doing and we wanted everybody to know what we've learned and know about it because it is a really great story to tell it is a success story and success brings joy and, and makes people happy so share it with somebody thank you for listening to the meant to be outdoors podcast if you want to support us financially we have a link to our patreon account if you uh, become the highest member on that 25 dollars a month we'll send you one of our meant to be outdoors hats right to your front door which is cool to be able to su- support us that way with some apparel Please follow us on all our social media accounts. Hit the automatic download button and subscribe and share our podcast with other people so we can help grow our audience so we they can get cool information as well. That is it for this episode of the Meant to Be Outdoors podcast. As always, between now and our next episode, please find time to get outdoors. Thank you for listening to the Meant to Be Outdoors podcast, hosted by Brian Hoffmeyer and Ben Brandell. Please help us by subscribing. Also, follow along on TikTok, Instagram, and Facebook.